My name is Sarah. I'm one of the marine biologists at That Fish Place, and today we're going to go over how to install a canister filter into your aquarium. The filters will come with all of the plastic tubing that you're going to need. This you set up for the intake and the output of your filter. All of the filter tubing that you'll need will be included in the box. Most canister filters come with the filter media. Uh, what's nice about this particular model is that it's already measured out into the quantities that you'll want. The last part that you'll pull out of the box is the canister itself. The first part that you'll want to do is put your filter media in your canister. The filter media is the part that actually does the filtering of your water. It's usually suggested that you use a combination of mechanical, biological, and chemical filtration. But the great thing about the canister filters is you can alternate and choose what you would like for the needs of your aquarium. The first step to get to the filter media is to open the top by removing these clamps. This first basket came with the mechanical filtration. It has two different types of sponges, both the coarse sponge on the bottom and the fine sponge that's on top. The coarse sponge catches all of the large particles in the water and then the finer sponge catches the smaller particles. The next basket that you use will have your chemical and your biological filtration in it. For this particular model, we chose to put the ceramic rings for the biological filtration. This is something that you'll have to purchase when you get your filter so you can decide which one you would like to use. These rings have a lot of surface area for your nitrifying bacteria to grow on. Put in the separator, and this is where you can add your chemical filtration. Now you're ready for the next step of setting up your intake and your output. First part is you want to find the strainer. That's the part that has these little slots in it. And then you want to connect it to these straight tubes. The next part you're going to need is this U-shape. This is what hangs over your filter and goes to the back of the tank. To assemble the output, we're going to use this strainer for our demonstration. You start off with the U-shaped piece, and then normally for the spray bar, we suggest putting it near the top of the water. To put it near the top, we'll use this shorter piece. This is the check valve that controls how much water is going out of your spray bar. You connect that to the tube, and then your spray bar gets connected to that part. Now that you have your parts assembled, it's time to put them in your tank. You want to use these suction cups that you are given and just clip them onto the tubing. The strainer part goes into the water, and this part hangs off the back of your tank. When you put your spray bar in, you want to make sure that these holes are facing out to the front of your tank. So you can twist this to adjust it wherever you want, but try to make sure that this check valve stays above the water line. Once you have your intake and your output assembled, it's time to attach them to the filter. When you put the hosing on, you want to try to get it on as far as possible, up past these three ridge lines. To secure the hose clamp, you push these together and the little ridges will catch and that will help hold the hose on so it doesn't come loose while you're running your filter. For the output, you want to follow the same procedure that you just did for the intake. Now when you place your filter, make sure to remember to line up your input and your output. Remember the input will be gray and the output will be black. When you decide how long you want your tubing, make sure that you include some space to put it on the end. Once you have the tubing cut to the length you want it, attach it to the end of the filter exactly the same way you did as you attached it to the input. Once you have that attached, again try to get it to the end of the three ridges and put one of the hose clamps on the end. If you have trouble attaching it, um, it's a little bit difficult to get the hot water to it, so just kind of wiggle it a little bit and it'll go on. And then if you want to secure the hose clamps even further, you can use a pair of pliers to get them secured. Now that you have all of your tubing attached, before you turn on your filter, you must prime it first. Your first step is to open this quick release valve. Your next step is to fill these tubes with water. Use the funnel that they gave you in your filter.
Now that your filter's primed, it's safe to plug it in to turn it on. There might be a few initial air bubbles, but those will work out of your system as the filter is running. Thank you for viewing that Fish Place's Guide to Canister Filters. If you have any questions when you're setting up your filter or any of your other aquarium questions, feel free to email us at marinebio at thatpetplace.com or you can call us at 1-888-842-8738. Thank you and bye.